Okay, so now we're going to have a, a new talk, uh, which is um, about um, remote uh, heart monitoring using uh, lasers. So how Goldie uh, received his uh, of engineering in electronic engineering at the uh, University of Northumbria and Major Science in Communication and Signal Processing at University of Newcastle. And he got his PhD in the field of multimodal radar sensing and machine learning at the University of Glasgow in 2020. He's currently a postdoc of Quest Project in the Extreme Light Group, led by Professor Daniel Tacho. His research includes measuring heart sound of human and detecting the abnormality within heart using laser. Hi everyone. So today my presentation title is Remote Heart Sound Monitoring and uh, Biometrical Identification Using Laser Camera. So first let's uh, go through the content. So first I will introduce the motivation of using laser and machine learning together. And then we are going to the experimental setup, which how we collect the data. And then we are going through the methodology which we are going to using optical flow and wavelength future extraction and then we are have some like preliminary results uh, like with uh, which we train a classifier with the hard sound data to distinguish different people and also we try to apply some classifier fusion techniques and then it's the conclusion and future work so first let's go through the motivation part uh, so the cardiac disease they are actually the leading cause of the disability and also the death, especially for the elderly people. So it's taking an estimate of uh, 70.9 million lives each year. So this is a very significant problem. And uh, also we will find that early identification of uh, cardiac conditions could improve the well-being of uh, human and also prevent the potential deaths. So, and currently we are using the heart sound as the corn, uh, cornerstone of the cardiac examination. So your heart sound examination is always the first step. Then you will have uh, ultrasonic or MRI scan. And uh, so the usual like technique for measuring the heart sound is a stethoscope. So, but uh, to operate a stethoscope, you always need somebody with experience, a trained person, a clinician to help you uh, to distinguish the heart sound and the murmurs. So that's why we think machine learning is very useful in this part because machine learning like right, can automatically uh, distinguish people with potential heart disease or healthy people. And uh, also, we want why we want to use laser in this project is because the stethoscope based heart sound measurement they requires close contact uh, of patients and uh, human skin, which is not very ideal in the in this like pandemic nowadays. So you like in our you using our method with laser, we can be like two meters far away from like uh, between the like. Uh, the uh, patients and the uh, and the, like uh, the clinic clinicians like using this technology, so that's very safe. So and also we can see the experimental setup. So we are using a, a four mini watt uh, continuous laser. It's a green laser to pointing the uh, person's neck. And uh, also we are using, in the same time, we are using a CMOS camera. So to record the spiral patterns reflected from the subject's skin. And uh, also the camera is connected uh, with a laptop via USB cable and the raw video uh, frame is saved and processed through the net lab. So let's go through the data pre-processing step. So first is the optical flow. So you can see from the camera, like uh, two continuous video frame, and you see those spikes. And uh, in these two like continuous frames, you will see the spikes getting very smooth, uh, very, very like slow movement. And we're using an uh, algorithm called the uh, Lucas Kane algorithm to calculate the optical flow, which is like the uh, 
uh, the vertical speed of, of, of this. And then we are using a filter to filter the noise of our data. So you will see the results after the filtering. You will see like clearly the horizon S1 and S2, S1 and S2. And uh, then we are go through the wavelength future extraction. So we using like wavelength uh, like filter bank to uh, apply on the data set and we generated the wavelength features to make the data set more separable. So finally, we train a classifier to, in our case, it's a small factor machine to distinguish different people. So that's where we show like the, the our data, like using laser and also the uh, hard sum collected by a stethoscope. So you will see like uh, in the, in the in the first uh, first image, that's the uh, look uh, the, the the data track from the stethoscope, and the, the one on the right hand side is the data track from the laser. And the the, the lower row, you will see like uh, the the hard sound retrieved actually from from the from those images. And you can see like uh, from the frequency bound, like uh, the data using laser is actually like more stronger between like 20 to 700 hertz. So it's actually can be better than the stethoscope. You, are, you also can see that the laser is able to capture the some murmur like uh, S3 and S4 rather than just S1 and S2 using the stethoscope. So we are using wavelength features for the uh, before the training of the classifier. So if you see the figure at the right hand side, the one like uh, actually before the wavelength future extraction. So we use a T distributed stochastic neighbor embedding to show like uh, how the future space looks like. So you will see the data is actually mixed with each other like different person's data. And after applying a wavelength future transform, you are getting like data like uh, you can see the, the one like uh, lower side is very very good like after the scattering transform so different like a uh, person's data they are clustered in different clusters so and then we apply a simple SVM to classify different people to do the biometric identification so you will see people from 10, uh, 1 to 10, so we have totally got about 10 subjects. So those are the conclusion measures of it. So the first one is the data from the stethoscope. Then the second one is the data using uh, like using laser, but it's training and testing on the same day data. And the last one is uh, we training on test on different days data, so it's more like uh, challenging. So you can see like, uh, uh, using the like uh, laser is actually be quite a lot better than the data from stethoscope in like biometric identification. So, and then we, want, we want to improve the results by apply the classified fusion. So before we only got one classified, which is the SVM. So now we try to add two more. So, which is the random forest in the middle and also the KNS neighbor in the right. So, we try to add them together by apply a fusion function of it. If you can see on the, on the equations, so S is the uh, sample number and C is the class number. So, each classifier will generate a confidence level uh, when it makes a decision. So, what we do is we try to uh, combine those confidence level with a function. So in our case, we put uh, each of the classifiers the uh, same weight, but uh, later we could modify with different weight, which may be better. So after that, we, we got a uh, like fusion, confusion, uh, no, fusion confidence level matrix. Then we are getting the like the best uh, class, which yields the, the, the best confidence level as output results. So that's the results after the fusion. So you can see the uh, the, the the one uh, they are both in, uh, they are both using laser. They are both like uh, like 
as as we show in the, in the previous slides. So uh, if you see like here, it's actually slightly better than the one before using the same day data. And that one uh, on the right side is a lot better for the like person number six. If you see it before, it's uh, it's very, very low. So now it's uh, up to a accept, accepted level. And we also try to show Try to show something like we we can measure the heart sound from the different uh, positions of human body. So you can see before we only measure the heart sound from the person's neck, but now we are also doing some experiments from measuring the heart sound like pointing the laser to to your chest region and pointing the laser to your abdomen, pointing the laser to like to your wrist and to your arms, even like to your foot. So here are the heart sound retrieved from different parts of the human body. So the upper row, so it's a chest and the abdomen area. So you can see from those area, we got like quite good heart sound signal. It's almost the same quality as the neck. So, and also the arm is the, is the one on the limbs and also on your neck. So, but you can, you can, it is, it is quite like clear that you, when you're doing the, when you're pointing the laser to your, to your wrist and you're pointing the laser, laser to your foot, the data, you can see it's not as good as uh, you're pointing the laser to your chest or pointing the laser to your neck. That's why, because it is a bit far from your heart and uh, sort of the signal get accumulated a lot. And uh, now we have our conclusions part. So we are able to using laser-based methods to measure the heart sound, which can give you the comparable performance as using a stereoscope, even slightly better. So we are able to using wavelength features, which it, it significantly increases the spectability of the data set. Also combining multiple classifiers with fusion of them can enhance the results of our biometrical identification, and also our laser-based system can retrieve the heart sound from different, different parts of the human body. So the future work includes we are collecting data from real patients, like people with uh, cardiac disease, like with the help of NHS and cardiologists in the University of Glasgow, and we are going to try a machine learning assisted method to distinguish different disease and also identify healthy people and we are going to use deep learning, like observes, like CNN or recurrent new network for the video and sequence data. And we will maybe have more elderly people, like real patients or more fusion techniques. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, does anybody have any question about this topic? Okay, so I'm going to start off with one. Um, so as I understand it, uh, you said that uh, one of the reasons to use uh, this kind of tool is to maybe uh, have a medical examination without uh, actually uh, seeing uh, a physician. And so that's the reason that uh, when uh, the doctor uses a stethoscope, uh, he will both uh, ensure that uh, he's going to interpret very good correctly, but he will also uh, keep the measurements correctly. And uh, I think that uh, the system is able to uh, interpret uh, very well the, the signals uh, that you see from the laser. And uh, how sensitive is it to the data, to the data measurement procedure? I mean, like if uh, the user maybe does not manipulate the laser correctly, uh, will it still be able to capture the signals so as to make uh, a prognosis about the patient? Yeah, so in our case, the patient needs to be sitting on a chair without movement to do this experiment. And also the laser needs to be operated by a experienced guy also. Like you need to have a trained people to point the laser to, to your skin, like to your neck. So the position is quite easy to find. It's not very hard to find the position, but the, it's, it's the, the hardest part is the patients. So the patients needs to be Oh, he, he cannot move. That's the that's the like uh, the challenging. So we also discover some like technology which 
I mean, a lot of people moving during the data caching, which could be in the later future, like to do this. Hi, well done for the presentation. Um, I would like to ask uh, about the labels. What kind of label do you use for the this file? Do you use a cardiologist uh, examination? Uh, you mean the labels yeah. of our file? So our labels is only the the people. So like uh, uh, me or you or other guys. So actually, I know who is who, whose data no, I mean, is who. I mean, for the first fire. Um, so if you use the supervised machine learning. Yes, yeah, the supervised machine learning. So for the labels, after you start the features. Yeah. Uh, you use the the cardiologist examination. Uh, oh no! Oh, I what I'm doing, trying to do is uh, I'm trying to classify different people. So like me or your parts on data is actually different. Huh? So I'm not trying to like distinguish healthy people with huh? patients currently. So I don't need the okay. like like the cardiologist uh, examination. Yeah, for now. Okay, thank you. It's fine. Get to another question in the middle. Uh, uh, very interesting presentation. Stethoscopes are also important for lung sound analysis. I wonder if you had any ideas about the applicability of this in distinguishing different kinds of pulmonary disorders from uh, lung sound. It's uh, an area that's been worked on using traditional signal processing methods, and I wonder whether you saw potential for your approach for lung sound as well. You mean try to measure the measure, you know, freezes and crackles and things that uh, clinicians can detect using stethoscopes listening to the lungs. Yeah, so we have discussed it uh, within the Quest project, uh, like uh, with the, all the GP and uh, uh, clinician people. So, uh, so they actually suggest us to measure like uh, something other parameters like blood pressure or like some. Healthy problems with, with the lungs. So yeah, we, we will try it later. I think it is possible, but we need to try this with him. Um, yeah, I have another question as well. Uh, one of the common issues that we have when deploying a machine learning system in a clinical context is uh, maybe the issue of actually interpreting uh, the decision of the classifier. And uh, how is it that it would be to be, for example, to uh, to actually explain uh, why a classifier uh, uh, took uh, one decision or another, given that we have like one layer of feature transformation and then one layer of uh, classification? So, could you repeat your question? Uh, so, I mean, like, uh, how, uh, it is, uh, how easy uh, can you do? Or, uh, uh, how do we use this technique to actually like, interpret the results of the classifier so that you know when we're looking at the decision of the supervisor machine, for example, when uh, when uh, one patient signal, uh, can we actually interpret the decision of the classifier? Yeah, we can. So uh, the 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 output from the classifier is actually the person's like number in our case, like. Person maybe number one to number ten, so you're easy to find the answer. Okay, and uh, I mean, uh, is there like some explainability where uh, you know some features may be like more important than others? Oh yeah, so talking about those features, so uh, in our case, we are using a feature selection of them to find which feature from the filter bank like is the most important thing. So we are using a sequential feature selection, running now to select the most important features from all. So yeah, uh, yeah, maybe in the later future we can, we can present that. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for having more question. Uh, thank you very much again. Uh, thank you.
Hi. Mm -hmm. Is it a pointer or shall I use? Uh, yeah. one, uh, okay. Sorry. Great.